Hello everyone, it's Miss Rachel here again. I am going to talk to you today about plants and seeds. Before we begin our lesson, I wanted to read a book to you called The Tiny Seed by Eric Carl. Maybe some of you have heard this book before. It is autumn, a strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than the other seeds. It will be, it will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burns it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on in the wind, but the tiny, tiny seed does not go as high as the others. One seed drifts down into the desert and it is hot and dry and the seed cannot grow. Now this tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seed falls gently down to the, on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Now it is winter. After their long trip, after their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they were going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch, but the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shine, rains fall. The seeds grow so round and full that they start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore, they are plants. First they send roots down into the earth and then their little stems and leaves begin to grow upward towards the sun and air. There's another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from the one of the small new plants and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't, hasn't begun to grow yet. It will, will it be too late? Hurry! But finally it starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun in the springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what is happening? First there are footsteps and then the shadow looms over them and then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now our flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at the flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and the bees and the butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler. 
and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower's seed pods open. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail away, sail far away into the wind. The book, The Tiny Seed, is about a tiny seed and its journey to become a full-grown, mature plant, and eventually it has seeds of its own. Plants grow, I have here, plants grow from seeds. After a seed is planted, a sprout will pop out of the soil. If you guys can see here, this is a whole bunch of different seeds, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. And then, when the seed goes into the soil, it'll eventually pop out as a little sprout. And here's some picture of giant sunflower seeds. Let me see if I can show you, like I have been doing a little experiment and maybe you can see this, but this is a bean sprout. And I have had that hanging in my window only for a few days. And this, it was, a, this it still is a seed and it's got a little sprout coming out of it. If you can see that there through the plastic baggie. The stems will begin to grow taller and some plants grow faster than others, but they'll grow taller and thicker and become a mature plant. And then roots will also reach deep down into the soil to gather uh, water and nutrients for the plants. As you can see here, here is the soil, right here is the soil and here's the roots and this is the stem and the leaves and it's growing nice and tall and it's growing towards the sun. So we know that the plants need water, soil, and sun to grow, correct? All right, so oh, here's a bigger picture of roots for you to give you a better idea. There's the roots. It says here, underground, the roots of the plant are growing down into the soil. And then we have flower buds begin to grow from the stem of the plant and bloom into a beautiful flower. How many of you have seen flowers like that? So here again, we have the roots and the stem and the leaves, and then there's the flower. All right, so plants need water, soil, and light, or the sun to grow. The roots search for food and water in the soil. The stems carry the water and food up to the rest of the plant. So all the parts are working together, kind of like our bodies. Every part of our body works together. It says the leaves make food for the plant. They soak up the sunlight and change it into food for the plants. The veins, the leaves carry the veins and the leaves carry the food and water to the rest of the plant. It's kind of like our circulatory system. You remember that, my steam, my explorer friends. We talked about the circulatory system and how our blood moves through our body. Well, the veins do. Uh, the veins of the plants do a similar job. And they're all different kinds of plants. And you might even like to eat some of the plants. Like here, we have a celery, which is the stem of the plant. And then a carrot. Did you realize you're eating the root of the carrot whenever you're eating it? And then here's the broccoli and you're eating the flower of the broccoli. What else do we have on here? Oh, what do you guys think this is right here? Can anybody tell me what that is? That's lettuce. You're eating the leaf. Did I miss one? Oh, here we go, one more. Corn, everybody loves corn, right? The corn right there, that's the seed of the plant. Let's do a quick little review. So we have the soil, which we need, which, right, nutrients. The roots would bring the nutrients and the water up all the way through the stem, out to the leaves, and all the way up to the flower, okay? All right, so we have our life cycle of the plant. Have you guys heard the term life cycle before? Well, we can go over it a little bit right here. So we have the seed. So that's the very beginning of the life of the plant. The seed goes into the soil and it becomes a sprout. And then it continues to grow and it becomes a mature plant. 
So you probably see little seedlings or saplings out there and then as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they grow into a mature plant and they get bigger leaves and then they get flowers. And then look at what happens. It goes back to the seeds. So the flowers produce seeds and those seeds get dispersed either by wind or animals or even people planting them into the ground. And then the life cycle starts all over again. It goes back to a sprout, a mature plant, all the way up to the flowers and then back to the seeds. So you have a little activity to do in your kits that went home with you. You should have some Ziploc baggies. You should have some seeds. Here's a variety of seeds that I have. Um, your seeds are probably gonna be different than what I have. And this was a bean seed. You see how large it is? And this one here, these little bitty bitty seeds. See those little itty bitty guys that are completely different than this guy? That's lettuce. And then this here was a cucumber seed or is a cucumber seed. And this one right here is a tomato. And you see all the different sizes? We got large and um, kind of an oblong oval shape. And this one here, the tomato is round. Seeds come in all different shapes and sizes, just like us. Can you believe it? So you're gonna have seeds, a baggie of seeds. And I think you might have cantaloupe, you might have wildflowers, a whole variety in your pack. So check it out. And then you should also have cotton ball. So everybody's got some cotton ball in there. So what I want you to do is open up your packet and bring out your cotton ball and kind of stretch it out a little bit like this. Kind of fluff it. Fluff it kind of like you do probably for some of your art projects to get nice fluffy clouds where you're going to kind of pull it gently and fluff it. Okay? And then we're going to take a seed and I'm going to use the bush bean, what I have right here. There's the bean. Because this one's nice and large and it'll help you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so I have the bush bean. Take your cotton ball, put it in water. I will get it wet. I have a little bowl of water here. Get it wet, but not too wet. So you want to squeeze out some of your water like that, okay? You don't want it too soaking wet. All right, and then you're going to take your bush bean and put it on your cotton ball. If you want, you can kind of fold it in to your cotton ball and kind of wrap it up like a little package, but nice and loose because you need that sprout to be able to grow. Or if you really want to see the action, as it starts to grow, you can just lay it right on top like that, okay? All right, and then we are gonna put our seed in the baggie like that, and then you're gonna zip it up, all right? Just like that. And you can write on the outside of your baggie what it is, if it's cantaloupe, wildflower, bean, whatever you all have, okay? And I'll show you some examples that I did. So I have the tomato, this one right here. This is the tomato and it has been wrapped or this one um, is sitting on top obviously. And then I have a tomato plant inside the cotton ball but you can't really see it. And this has been in my window, in my bathroom window because it's a nice sunny window. I had it taped up in the window. You can't really see the tape. I don't know if you can see the tape but it was taped up in my window mm, probably a good four or five days now. And there's no sprout. There's no sprout on that one. In contrast though, I had a bush bean also in the window and look at how much it has sprouted, friends. Look at how big that is. And that was just in a few days. I bet you might be able to see some shadowing. Might be better on this side. You see that? There's the bush bean inside the cotton ball and it is starting to grow in there too. And then I also had cucumber. There's my cucumber right there. It's starting to sprout. And then my last but not least, I had some lettuce. Right there's my lettuce and it's starting to grow. And do you see the difference in the sizes of the plants? There's my bean. There's my lettuce. Little, little, little bitty lettuce coming out of that little seed. So here were the seeds again. If you want to see, this was the lettuce. And this was the bean, big difference in the sizes. But you will zip up your bag, tape it into your window and watch it grow. It may take, it may take a few days to start to get a sprout. And when you get a nice, big, healthy sprout like this, you can help mom and dad plant it into a pot or into the ground and watch it grow. 
All right, friends, I hope, I think I've covered everything here. I hope you've learned a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing photos of your growing plants in your new garden. You're gonna have lots of time to watch them and I'm looking forward to it. I'll talk to you all later, bye.